Right, uh, you're still watching Morning at uh, NTV. Arnold Segawa here with you. It's uh, just about 24 minutes to uh, 9 a.m. Uh, let's uh, shift gear and uh, talk about cybersecurity. A recent report has actually unveiled that uh, uh, there happens to be a lot of uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, trends that are on the spike uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, notwithstanding the lockdown as it stands, East Africa not spared. Uh, to uh, help us uh, just uh, understand this particular conversation a little better, we do have uh, Bright uh, Maudor, who is the head of uh, managed security services at uh, Dimension Data. Uh, Bright, thanks for uh, making time to speak to us. Uh, just give us uh, a sense of this particular sort of, uh, I don't want to call it a correlation, but it, looks like, it, it does look like a bit of a core movement between uh, the lockdown, us embracing digital meetings, uh, things like Zooms, things like Skype, uh, and uh, what the implications are turning out to be when it comes to uh, uh, cyber security. I mentioned uh, Dave. Well, to e speak everybody to us, uh, right just now. Just give us uh, the sense of this particular. Working from home, remote connections to the office and the lines happen. Nobody planned for it. Mm -hmm. Some people did plan for it and were able to, uh, to activate their business continuity and the lines. But some of the issues that came about were something, to, uh, for example, having active monitoring of systems and networks. Most people were not managed, were not monitoring their, their networks or their systems, so they have absolutely no idea what is going on in their systems. They do not have visibility into what is going on when they're working from home. So the skeleton office or skeleton uh, staff who is working at the office could be colluding with external uh, parties to be able to compromise them. So we saw, we have a threat intelligence center, dimension data, and we saw a spike in a lot of threats that are coming from internal network and systems. We also saw that people are trying to access, access their data, which are only accessible in the office. That means they need what we call a virtual private network. Majority of them, again, did not plan for this properly, so they were using other kind of ways to get into their systems, which in turn allowed them to be able to get compromised easily or could allow somebody to actually take over just because of one person being vulnerable. There's also been a lot of phishing attacks, which is basically hackers from outside trying to send malicious links to, to employees all over the world to see who will click on it, who will download an attachment, who is going to use that file. And when they compromise one person, you know that is compromising the, in the entire organization. Business continuity is not something that a lot of people were prepared for, so they were not able to activate their business continuity processes. And last but not the least, backups. Most people were, were not backing up their system to the cloud, so they were not able to actually get access to their files easily. And also, in case they actually lose their laptops or systems, um, for due to other physical means, there will be no way for them to be able to get access to them. So there has been a lot of all of those um, um, un uncertainties and unusual uh, uh, activities that have been going on. And most. Right, uh, Bright, let, let's uh, talk about something else which uh, happens to be the preparedness. Um, I remember it was around uh, January, right? Uh, COVID-19 is uh, predominantly still in Asia, predominantly in Wuhan. And uh, in Johannesburg, on the other hand, uh, some companies that I, could, I saw personally, uh, Liberty, the insurance company, uh, they were already preparing. Uh, they were already making plans for... What happens if uh, there are pandemics? What hap if, if there's a pandemic? What happens if there's a lockdown? Um, give me a sense of the cost of not preparing for working at home, working remotely. Right, uh, we're, we're having a bit of an issue with the connection, but uh, fascinating insights indeed. Uh, we're speaking to our Dimension Data's uh, uh, Bright Maudor, who is uh, the head of uh, managed uh, security services. 
uh, right now. Uh, he's, of course, joining us uh, from uh, Nairobi. But uh, in the interim, uh, let's uh, just uh, get a traffic update from uh, Stephen Mbide, who's uh, still in uh, uh, on the streets of Kampala. Uh, he's, of course, uh, our uh, resident reporter here at uh, Morning at NTV. Uh, to just uh, give us a sense of uh, the traffic as uh, you have been traversing uh, many of the streets in Kampala. I'm sure you've uh, realized that uh, the traffic was uh, uh, quite a bit more, you know, from uh, what it was uh, just before uh, the private cars came back and uh, right after the private cars uh, were returned to the streets. Uh, the difference is quite stark. If uh, you did leave your house at uh, 6 a.m., uh, chances are you will be getting to the office uh, at around 9 a.m. It's even worse in the evening. Um, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen uh, just uh, give us a sense of how bad the traffic uh, situation is right now. Yes, Enod Sogawa, I'm here downtown Kampala. This is Gazaland. Echimu Kuizimbe, Wakedi Mkampala, Zivira Kabantu Abanjenyo. This is one of the buildings that are under lock and key because of the ongoing lockdown uh, that at least government is trying to ease with uh, at least uh, that the efforts of reopening two arcades for now. That is uh, Parkerview uh, Arcade and the other side of Motasa Cafe. But uh, people around here are now devising means of trying to make uh, some sales here. Uh, they are using, some of them are using the vehicles uh, that they park outside here and they open and sell uh, issues, uh, things like uh, phones, th things like uh, hair weaves and other electronics and other, st other stuff. Uh, some of the vehicles here parked here are uh, full of stuff inside them, but uh, uh, the traders here don't want to open because they saw the camera. But I will be trying to speak to uh, some of them to let me know what their pain is for now. Nyabo was so Okay. Uh, these ladies are some of the people who sell uh, vehicles here. They are trying to uh, do some, um, some stuff. Inside, the, inside these vehicles, you will see that there is a lot of uh, stuff that is being sold here, uh, inside the, the, the vehicles here. But this is one of the several soldiers. Yeah, uh, Godfrey. Chairman, the Kampala Arcaders, Traders Association, Kata, Chivina Chava Suzaba Kuriyama Akidizo Mukampala. Esebo. Kakati, Mandu Kaka Charima Gari, New Airport Suez, Yokola and Gava Gura, Avandu, Sukumi, Mutas of Kundi, and into one in a motor car. Chi, Chumaga, Chuanga, Chikola, Wuluma, Wuluma, the one at Sawazin. A Sawazino, a Vituluma, a Mirundi, a Vidi. A Chisoka Dalla, Twa Twaka, Vidi, the government, you could song a yarrant. Nitutuka ni musteta usentevi. Sebe ni sawa ya alero. Tanaba kukola kusonga ya fe. Katibali mukule mbeza nsonga ya kugula wo. Obu wichi chirunji nyo. Okubanga tukugulu hao. Uh, Tuategeze dua. Minister wa trade. Ne minister wa, wa Kampala. Na wa hede. Kienchawa genda kujia. Olu alero kumidia center. Batubulile. Oba evizimbe. Bigenda kugulu hao. Bali bagala tugulewo eh, uh, kota kota ye bizimbe oba hafu ebizimba abili 15 of which fenga kata chetwa wakanya nti bwe kiba kya kugulawo bizimbe byo ne bizimbe bigulewo omulundi gumu okutundira mu motoka kiswaza no kuswaza okubanga government ya gulawo chikubo emyeze ebili tefuna kumu rwade wa corona virus nenge chaga dewe bichi ebizimbe so eh, Bwechiba anti kutiabu wade, echikubo chechandi sembie yo kugulu hao. Newe chiba anti chechia soka. Ne wali nisonga wachi government, e gana o kugulu hao evi zimbe. O kutubida mwoto ka, wabula, uh, tuno nyana fe, ngeri chijetu, jetu na asobola. O government ya gama mungu mekirize koka tono honga, wegena masu ni nte siganyiranga wonga wogambi, wagena kugela na mwe, uluwa liru. Aluwa chitimungu mekiriza konte kateke ni mwinda mwanyi chichewa gamba. Tugumikiriza, tugumikiriza, tubalize. Ne, echa mazima, echo kugula wakedi. Balu wawo nyo nyo nyo. Toso wala kuta tax. Tax ya tulamu abantu abedidani ganye. No gala weduka abantu abatulanga beya wode. Bewa de space. So, tulo waza ndi chino, chirimu bia bufuzi. Ne, tusaba badnanga abatekila tekila echibuga. Muje ebyo bufuzi muteka teka, zobu sobuzi. Okay. Mpoze chirala, aa... Uh, 
Newe muna gula wonga temumaze kuteka teka bulunji songa ya rent. Tetuli bamativu na teka teka ya mwe. Eda tugenda kukola echi soboka. Okulaba anga okugula okwe wizimbe kukuata gana ne rent. Kubanga basubu ste wali we tugenda kujasi mbiza bupangisa. Otherwise, nga mwete geso kutugo wa mchibuga mwemuje mchevelele munga wa government officials. Ok, uh, sebo gami amanyani? Amanyani ya katongo le godi fulechia manikata. Ok, uh, this is what is happening here. I'll be coming back shortly. Uh, but all this lane that connects you towards Williams, Wilson Street is the one that uh, at least uh, many of the vendors are using to sell their merchandise here. This is morning at NTV. For now, I'll be taking you back to studio for uh, Arnold Sega who is there. And we'll be taking you on with the rest of the conversation. I'll be back shortly. Stephen Biday, uh, thanks for that. Uh, continuing with our conversation earlier on, uh, we're speaking to our Dimension Data's uh, Head of Managed Security Services. That's uh, Bright Maudor joining us uh, from Nairobi. Bright, uh, earlier on, I was uh, alluding to the fact that uh, some companies like in, uh, Johannesburg, uh, with the particular case of uh, Liberty, the insurance company, now they started preparing for uh, a lockdown kind of environment and working from home as early as January 2020 when they learned of... Uh, well, when they realized that uh, Wuhan was just spiraling out of control. Uh, give me a sense of what the cost is, uh, cyber security wise, of a late migration and not actually preparing as a company. Uh, so the cost could be taken up by, say, we could be looking at almost 50% extra cost in, the, in, in, in expenses because now you have to invest in extra connectivity, you have to invest in extra. Uh, measures and details that you need to implement in your networking systems. Um, also, business continuity-wise, some people now started developing policies and governance and, and controls to be able to implement. So, for the fact that they were not ready for it, or even systems like say cloud backups, for the fact that they were not there, now they have to actually adopt a cloud backup system. They have to have it's an extra cost to that. So, there's almost let me say between 30 to 50 percent extra in cost of. Uh, of normal operations. Um, and sometimes there are the cases whereby people don't have laptops or they don't have uh, the right um, connectivity where they are from their home, for their homes. So you have to provide that for them to be able to continue working. Um, and those who are working late or those who are working somewhere that is not safe to go at night or don't have transportation, you have to, co you have to consider having extra um, transportation costs for them. So a lot of details have to be looked into that. Uh, Bright, uh, going through your latest uh, Dimension Data report, something that's quite striking is, uh, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was a quote, that uh, um, uh, hackers and cyber security uh, criminals are uh, automating these hacks. Uh, yes. What, what, what exactly does that mean? And uh, as an ordinary Joe like Arnold here, how do you fight against an automated hack? Uh, if it's a password, someone can easily try 50,000 uh, uh, combinations in less than 30 seconds. Yes. So, so back in the day, for me to be able to try to get into your account, I'll have to try to say, try um, Arnold one two three, Arnold one two three four, Arnold five six seven eight, different kind of combinations. That will take me years for me to be able to guess even what your password is. Hackers these days all have to do is if I run your name against a few systems that I have, I will be able to pick every single detail against your name and what is expected about you on the internet. Put, a, put all of that together, and a simple laptop that I have at home can run about 200 words per second against your account to try to see if I can break in. So that's automation. Everything has been automated to be able to make attacks faster. There are open source tools and mechanisms that have been employed to be able to make sure that they can actually um, automate the kind of processes they do. So hackers these days, if they want to do, like they're doing COVID-19, a lot of phishing attacks that we're seeing on people's accounts, they do a mass spreading, say, we're going to send out a million and one messages. We know at least a hundred of them are going to click on the link or are going to download the attachment. So having those automated ways also need automated response. That is where we're looking at what we call security orchestration, automation and response tools. What does that mean? Meaning that there are tools that can automatically see an attack that is happening, but not only see it and let you know that it's happening, but also be able to remedy it. So if you look at the, for example, malware system in organizations, some people don't have uh, anti-malware solutions. Some do have it, but it's a traditional anti-malware solution. But you need what you call an endpoint detection and response tools, 
working with the security orchestration and automation response tools that if I see a malware or I see an, 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 an anomaly, an anomaly or an activity that is not real, I will not just alert the administrator who is probably asleep, but I'll be able to remediate automatically. So automated attacks need an automated response when it comes to, uh, to response as well. And a lot of organizations are not ready for incident response. You find out that um, they've been hacked right now or even being hacked at home and you don't know who do I call, what do I do, what is the first step do I take to, to actually remediate that, that, that problem. And imagine an organization where there are 500 employees all working from home or even half of them working from home. How are they going to have to do all of these? All of these need some sort of automation and that is where the world of cybersecurity is moving to, automation. Uh, Bright, many thanks for Hello. making time to speak to us. Uh, many thanks for that, Bright. Uh, Bright uh, Maudor, who is uh, the head of managed security services, joining us from Dimension Data. That's, of course, uh, executed in, uh, well, the Africa operations are in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Bright, uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. It's just uh, eight minutes to uh, 9 p.m. That sums it up for this edition of Morning at NTV. I will be back uh, at uh, 1 p.m. That's uh, with the NTV at 1 uh, for now, though, have a good morning.